the James Webb telescope has unearthed six fully formed galaxies in an earlier time frame of the universe. A remarkable dream come true for space scientists. NASA's James Webb telescope has demonstrated its unprecedented capacity to analyze the atmosphere of a huge exoplanet. Webb has discovered haze, clouds, and ambiguous water signatures in a single observation using the combined power of its 270 square foot mirror, precision spectrographs, and sensitive detectors. The James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, is a space telescope currently conducting infrared astronomy. As the largest optical telescope in space, it is equipped with high resolution and high sensitivity instruments, allowing it to view objects too old, distant, or faint for the Hubble Space Telescope. But all this is just a piece of dust in front of the discovery we are going to discuss in this video, so hang on till the end. Time One of the most important things we use to plan our lives might not be as solid as we once thought. Philosophers, scientists, and regular people have been confused by the idea of time for hundreds of years. It is an important part of our lives because it helps us keep track of how much time has passed. But thanks to new technologies like the James Webb Space Telescope, we may be close to solving this mystery. The James Webb Space Telescope will be the most powerful observatory ever sent into space. It will change the way we think about the universe in a big way. This amazing telescope can do things that have never been done before. It can look deep into the universe and capture light from stars and galaxies that are billions of years old. But how does this relate to the idea of time? The James Webb Telescope will let us see things in space that are so far away that their light takes billions of years to reach us. When we look at these old light sources, it's almost like we're looking back in time and seeing how the world began. This idea is called look-back time. The idea of looking back in time is crazy. It means that when we look at things in the far distance, we don't see them as they are now, but as they were billions of years ago. This new information changes the way we think about time and makes us wonder, does time really exist? When scientists look at the data recorded by the James Webb Telescope, they find strange things that make it hard to tell where time begins and ends. For example, the views made with the telescope show how light is bent and distorted by massive objects in space. This creates a visual overlap, which lets us see different parts of the same cosmic event at the same time. In these situations, we see past, present, and future of the same thing happening at the same time. It seems like time is collapsing in on itself, and the idea of linear development is no longer valid. What we are finding out with the help of the James Webb Telescope is that our sense of time is closely linked to the way gravity works in the world. When space-time bends around big things, Strange things happen that make it hard to understand how things usually happen in order. It's great to be alive right now. The James Webb Telescope's discoveries have sent shockwaves through the space business. Scientists, astronomers, and philosophers are all trying to figure out what these results mean in a deep way. As we continue to learn more about the universe and push the limits of what we know, we must keep in mind that time as we know it may not be the absolute truth. The James Webb Telescope not only shows us things from a long time ago, but it also helps us understand how the universe is getting bigger. When the telescope looks at galaxies far away, it shows that the world is expanding faster and faster. This finding changes how we think about time in the universe. It argues that the future might not be a simple extrapolation of the past and present, but rather a complex and changing interplay of cosmic forces. Is time a concept that works the same way everywhere in the universe, or does it change based on where you are? The data from the James Webb Telescope gives us a tantalizing look at these puzzles. The information from the James Webb Telescope supports the idea that time is not a straight line, but rather a moving thing that is always changing. When we think about how the world is growing, the idea that time is a fixed framework starts to fall apart. It makes us think about how we see the past, present and future as separate things, and pushes us to look into how cosmic events are connected. Another crazy idea that comes from the findings of the James Webb Telescope is that wormholes could be used to travel through time. These possible shortcuts through space-time could let us move from one place in the world to another, which would be different from how we usually think of time travel. Einstein's theory of general relativity says that wormholes are like tunnels in space that connect different parts of the world. Even though wormholes that can be crossed are still just an idea, the data collected by the James Webb Telescope 
gives us clues about their possible existence and nature. If we can figure out how wormholes work and use them to our advantage, we might be able to travel through time, creating loops and connections that question our linear view of how time moves. The observations made by the James Webb Telescope add important information to the study of wormholes and the structure of space-time as a whole. Finally, the James Webb Telescope's studies of black holes, those mysterious parts of the universe, shed light on the way they make space-time very curved. As matter and energy fall into a black hole, they become infinitely squeezed, making what is called a singularity. When the singularity happens, time as we know it will end. Black holes are places in space where time doesn't work the way we think it does. Inside the event horizon of a black hole, time moves so slowly that it almost stops, and the usual rules of physics no longer apply. It forces us to rethink what we know about time and space, and to explore the uncharted areas of places with very strong gravity. These mind-blowing discoveries from the James Webb Telescope force us to rethink the very foundations of our world. Our sense of time is deeply connected to how the universe works, from the way space-time bends around big things to the growth of the universe itself. As we learn more and more, we have to be open to the idea that time as we know it is only a small part of the great cosmic tapestry. So, while we eagerly await for more information from the James Webb Telescope, let's keep our minds open to the endless possibilities that lie beyond our present understanding. Now, let's look at some of the puzzles, discoveries, and amazing pictures that the James Webb Telescope sent back. Now, here comes the factual and statistical part you've been looking for. Let's jump in this ocean together. Even though the James Webb Space Telescope hasn't been looking at the sky for a full year yet, it has already found some amazing things. But among the amazing pictures and new discoveries, there was a strange claim that the camera had found galaxies in the universe when it was so young. The news said that because these galaxies were so big and showed up so early, they broke the Big Bang model of astronomy. As with a lot of things on the internet, the story went viral, but it's not true. More studies now support the Big Bang theory. Researchers recently took a closer look at the data and found that the faraway galaxies found by the James Webb Space Telescope are, in fact, consistent with what we know about astronomy now. The problem with worlds far away is not that they exist. In fact, the current version of the Big Bang Theory, called CDM Cosmology, says that galaxies should have already been there when the universe was still very young. That's because there were no galaxies or even stars billions of years ago. When our world was much smaller and denser than it is now, everything was much more even, with only small differences in density popping up randomly here and there. But as time went on, the differences in density got bigger, and the slightly denser areas pulled more material onto themselves. Over hundreds of millions of years, these pockets grew into the first stars, which finally grew into the first galaxies. In fact, one of the main goals of the Webb Telescope was to find and study these first galaxies. This means that finding galaxies in a universe that is so young is a point for the Big Bang Theory, not against it. So, what's the fight about? Because of how much these galaxies are thought to weigh, there seems to be stress between them. Several were very big, with masses of more than 1,010 solar masses. That is still a lot smaller than the Milky Way, but in terms of the size of the universe at that time, they were pretty big. The scientists who found these galaxies thought that their big masses made them hard to fit into many models of how galaxies form and change. At their most extreme, the experts said that no galaxy formation model within the CDM framework could make such big galaxies so quickly. But these claims depended on being able to measure the exact distance to these galaxies, which is very hard to do at these great distances. For the record-breaking galaxies that might not fit with cosmological models, the researchers used something called a photometric redshift. This is a way to figure out how far away a galaxy is by fitting its rough light spectrum to a model. This method is extremely unreliable. For example, if there is too much dust around the galaxies, they look farther away than they really are. To figure out if the Big Bang is in trouble, a new team of experts used Webb to find galaxies using spectroscopic redshift, a much more accurate and reliable way to measure distance. With this method, the spectral lines of known elements that are given off by galaxies are found and used to measure the redshift, and by extension, the distance to the galaxies. With this more exact method, 
the team found four galaxies to study. All of those galaxies were just as far away as the ones that had already been found, but their distances were proven and accurate. The masses of these galaxies, on the other hand, were between 108 and 109 solar masses. So the question became, does CDM allow these smaller galaxies to exist at such an early time in the history of the universe, or does the tension remain? Building galaxies is no easy job. Within the CDM model, cosmologists can use pen and paper math to map out the history and evolution of the universe as a whole. However, galaxy formation is a complicated process that involves many different types of physics such as gravity, star formation and supernova explosions, dust distribution, cosmic rays, magnetic fields and more. To figure out how all of these things affect each other, scientists use simulations on supercomputers. These simulations take the universe as it was billions of years ago and use the laws of physics to build fake galaxies. That's the only way to connect what we see in real world galaxies with the basic factors of the CDM model. Researchers were able to try out different kinds of models with the help of simulations. If no models could make galaxies with that much mass at that age, the CDM would be in trouble. Luckily, nothing like that happened. The team explained in their study paper, which has been sent to the Astrophysical Journal Letters and is available as a preprint on Arxiv, that the appearance of galaxies with 108 solar masses in the early universe was no problem for CDM. Like always, this isn't the last word. Astronomers may still find out how far away a very big galaxy was in the early universe. This could make us rethink how galaxies form and maybe even the CDM model of the universe. Always keep an open mind when doing science, but the claims that were made that were too big based on the early web data aren't enough to worry about yet. But people still worry about all this information and try to figure out mysteries and dark facts. Do you think this is a good thing? Will you believe these things? Are you ready for some great changes? Tell us what you think in the comments and don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to our channel for more interesting science facts like this. We'll see you in the next video.